Good afternoon, guys. Hope everyone's having a great weekend. I certainly am. I'm actually watching the Test Cricket, watching Marnus Labuschagne score his first Test century. So that's been wicked. So today what we're going to talk about is soft plastics for room that I use. These will be the three top plastics I've used in the past. And I'll also put one notable mention in there as well because it's hard again to narrow down my top three plastics for one particular species. So we'll talk about firstly the plastics when I fish them and also we'll talk about the jig heads that I use with those plastics as well because given on a certain day or certain situation you need to vary how you're using the plastic, what weight you're using the plastic with and how you go about that. So let's talk about my third favorite soft plastic, and that's going to be a Z-Man, and that is in the Bloodworm color. That one there in particular is the two and a half inch. Uh, you can sometimes use the two inch as well. I feel like the two inch is a good size because you will attract the, the better brim, um, and you get plenty of bycatch as well. I don't think too small is an issue. As you start getting in the two and a half or the three inch sizes, the tails become quite a bit longer. So if the fish aren't committing to the strikes, they're going to sort of peck at the back of the tail. Whereas when you're using a small lure, obviously when the fish grabs it, uh, that can make a bit of a difference. So your hookup rates will probably increase given the fact using a smaller soft plastic. And look, if the fish is seeing it, that's probably the most important thing. So I wouldn't be too worried about the size. So when I'd use the blub worm, I'd probably use that on brighter days. So let's say if I'm fishing in the middle of the day on a sand flat, uh, really clear water, I'll be using one of the blood worms. Just because in the sun, you see the, the tails, they really glitter underneath the light. And uh, I guess given a fish attracting device with that shine or with that glitter, that can spark a sort of a bite. So I've used that plenty in the past for um, yeah your brim, your flatties, bass sometimes have a good crack at them as well. And um, Jews like the, obviously the blood worm color in bigger soft plastics though. So always a, a good shout. And with that, again, I've got the Z-Man there. You can all obviously use other brands. So uh, the Bloodworm Wriggler by Squidgy works awesome. I use that for all my flatties, that slimmer profile, but you'll get a lot of bycatch brim, um, depending on which one you do, or vice versa, you'll get a lot of bycatch flatties. So uh, either one is a good shout. So what I use with that typically is a TT jig head. I've got a couple of different sizes I use. I'd use a heavier size when I'm using that plastic normally because I'm, I'm trying to carve out some, um, I guess, area on the sand flat. So I want a really long cast to try and maximize how much of the, the fishing I'm actually doing. So I'd be using a TT. Uh, I'll be using normally probably about a 1 12th um, of an ounce. I've just got a 1 6th here because of, I've run out of my 1 12th. But just to show you what that looks like there, um, Obviously, you can get these at most tackle shops, great company, uh, great hooks, come out of the packet ultra sharp, so you're pretty much ready to go. So I'll be definitely running that on maybe a 1 12th. You could go up to maybe a uh, 1 8th. I wouldn't be using much heavier than that for your brim though, because you want that, that nice little sink rate. But like I said, I'm not too, too worried about how fast it is dropping, because I'm, I'm just trying to scope out fish and, and cover as much land as I possibly can. So ultra long casts, and just hopping that back slowly is the way I typically do it for the blood worms. So that is plastic number one. Plastic number two is going to be the similar brand, but in a different color. So the motor oil. I'm sure everyone's seen this online, brim forums, brim pages, people's Instagram accounts. But uh, it's a wicked, wicked color. If you use a UV torch and you shine it underneath the soft plastic, these just stand out like a sore thumb. So really good plastic to use. I use it more so in dirtier water. And I normally use those when I'm hopping around rock ledges or um, oyster racks as well. Probably when I'm doing that, the water is dirtier, hence the fact I'm using the, the motor oil there. But like I said, it stands out quite well. And with the darker water, I feel like it makes a stronger silhouette. So that's the application I'll use those for. When I'm using those typically, Again, pretty similar weight um, as I was using with the blood worm. Probably a bit lighter though. I'd like to probably go to 1 16th, 1 20th of an ounce, trying to get that slower sink rate just on the rock ledges and just slowly hopping that around. But such a good lure to use. And if you haven't used them in the past, they're ultra cheap. 
Uh, a lot of different brands make them, but Z-Mans are just a bit uh, better with that 10 times ultra tough, they say. You can use that for a few fish and, and you'll go fine. Whereas other plastics, when they have a bite of it, you'll find their tails get clipped off or the plastic gets chewed up. So using that brand is, is quite solid, I'd recommend. Um, again, so same, same jig heads and, and another great lure to start with with your brim stuff. And let's go my uh, favorite plastic for brim, given this time, <laughs> given this day. I chop and change the lures like I, you know, chop and change clothes. About the same time, this one's been ultra productive for me lately and the fish have been grabbing it. So that's the gulp crabby and that's in the two inch. So these lures themselves are ultra realistic. They look like a crab. I use this purely for structure fishing and also around boat holes. So I guess structures including that. So boat holes, pontoons, um, oyster racks, I'll use it potentially. Uh, there might probably be bigger areas. Just this lure, when you when you see it sink, it, it looks ultra cool just from a, a person's point of view. So for a fish, when they see the legs, they just when they land, they actually spread out. So it looks like a, a prawn or a, a, a big crab just floating down. So because it covers a bit more surface area, I think the fish are a greater chance of seeing it. And the color I use is the camo. So that's a green and also maybe a maroney type color. That stands out quite well and quite natural at the same time. I haven't actually used any other color apart from camo. So please um, recommend any colors if you have some. I was uh, watching Ross Canizaro fishing these in one of his ABT events. And I thought, yeah, I'm not a massive soft plastic fisherman for Brim. And that certainly turned me around using these. What I fish them on is a super light jig head though. So I'll be using 1 40th of an ounce regularly. So you need to make sure you have an ultra light line around four pound and uh, ultra light leader as well when you're doing that, just so you get that casting distance. I've tried fishing it on, you know, eight pound and the line doesn't cast as near as far. And also at the same time, you don't get as many bites. So I'll definitely recommend you using the uh, lighter jig heads with those. The heaviest I'd probably go would be 1 20th of an ounce if the current's really ripping through or if I'm trying to bounce them along the bottom. But the strike rate's a lot better with the 1 uh, 40th. And also with the 1 40th there, um, it allows you to basically just sit that on the bottom and slowly sink down. With your line, I, I typically keep that quite taut. And from there, I'll just let it sink, give it a little shuffle towards me, let it sink, give it a little shuffle towards me. I'm not too erratic with these guys. With obviously uh, your motor oils and also your blood worms, you can be a little bit more jumpy to get that tail working. With brim, I, I fish pretty slow typically, but with these guys, because it's a crab, I'm fishing that next level slow. It's, it's super, super boring to fish. Um, but you obviously get them, so it can't be that boring. A notable mention of mine is going to be the Gulp Brim Prawn. So that is in a two inch. That color there is the Pepper Prawn or Peppered Shrimp. So with that lure itself, it definitely gets a few more bites when the prawns are around. So after rain, or if there's just uh, prawns in the, in the system more than they typically are, a great lure to have a suss around. With the shrimp, the positive as well, because it is a shrimp, they move quite quick. So you can actually afford to cover a bit more ground, see if the brim are around, get some reaction bites. If you feel like you're grabbing, but you're not hooking up, that's when you can switch from the prawn and then maybe go to your crabbies or to your grubs, whatever you, you want to do with that. But I've found that's just a, a nice lure to have in the bag. I probably use that when I'm fishing for brim 20% of the time, if that. But at the same time, it's just good to have that versatility there. And because when you're brim fishing, you want to cover a number of different patterns. So we've got our crab pattern, we've got our prawn pattern, and we've got our bait fish pattern as well. So that covers all bases. If the fish are feeding on a certain type of fish, uh, only one I haven't really included here is your, your bait fish type profile. Hopefully the grubs cover that. People I've seen in the past or uh, even now to use the, the Slim Swims by Z-Man as well. That represents probably that bait fish profile. I've dabbled with them a little bit, but just in my experience, I haven't, I haven't caught great on them, whether that's I'm using them in the wrong areas or at the wrong times, 
I just find the lures are recommended here uh, will give you some sort of uh, success. So that's just going on my past experience anyway. But look, uh, give those a try or give one of them a try, whatever you, whatever you feel like you want to invest yourself into. But they're quite cheap, $10 a pack. And compared to some lures, $20 off the shelf for you know an eco gear are great lures. But when you're losing these and you cast them into structure, you don't feel as bad when you're losing a lure, you know, one or two dollars versus 20. So I feel like I'm a bit more brave when I'm using my <laughs> soft plastics. So give those a whirl. Uh, find me on Instagram, Billy underscore Troy underscore fishing. I've got the Australian Fishing Podcast, which is about to start up. I've got one episode there, but I'm trying to upload the new ones coming through. So please give those a listen to. And if there's any questions you want me to answer, I'll do my best to do that. And contact me because I'm really happy to share any information I have in my experiences. But cheers, have a great day and keep on fishing hard. Cheers.